just a few clicks, and you can see the entire makeup of a human brain. This is the highest resolution multi-dimensional digital brain diagram ever. This data set's called the big brain. It's, it's very analogous to, to mapping of the Earth. We're mapping the brain. People are saying these Montreal researchers are Google mapping the brain. Much like Google, this resource is massive, allowing us to see the brain like never before. This type of interactive, detailed scope is groundbreaking for research and education. It's important to understand the brain at different spatial scales. And we often talk about the, the, um, the brain as a, at the systems level. What we mean by that is how the whole brain is organized, how different parts of the brain talk to each other. But when you want to get down to the fine structure within any one of those brain regions, you need to get to a much higher resolution than an MRI volume will typically give you. All that detail means a lot of data, and that takes a lot of storage space. That's why they call it the big brain. The data set as a whole is 125,000 times bigger than a typical MRI volume. So it's huge. It's a, it's a data set on the order of a terabyte. This model took a total of seven years to complete. First, researchers in Germany sliced a donated human brain into 7,400 parts and then scanned those thin slivers into digital images. Because of the delicate material, many of the copies weren't exact. So when researchers at Montreal's McGill University received the slides, they had to digitally correct many of them before assembling the final 3D model. I would jokingly liken it to, to brain Tetris. It felt like either I was playing kind of a, a video game or using Photoshop. Um, and there's a lot more even, I think, subjective or artistic nature that in, into than you might expect to try to decide exactly what these pieces looked like in their original form. I wouldn't say it's not guesswork, um, but it, it is dependent on a grander feel for what the brain is supposed to look like. The big brain is near, but not quite at cellular resolution. If this were a map of the Earth instead, we're not getting close enough to make out cars or people, but seeing down into the cities on this kind of vantage is still incredibly useful. There are many ways that we can use this, this brain. Uh, one is as a digital template for all kinds of um, digital brain research where we want to assemble information at various spatial scales. It's also very useful for, for straightforward teaching. Um, my neuroanatomy colleagues have been very excited about the possibility of using this device to teach young medical students brain anatomy by moving through the brain in a perhaps a video game way. Modern generations, they're used to computers, they're used to interacting with, with three-dimensional objects. The brains of humans are essentially the same, though there are subtle differences reflecting our genetic inheritance and experience. We found out in recent years, quite fascinating, that the brain is very plastic. And just as an example, if you learn to juggle, your brain changes. Part of the areas involved in visual spatial processing and motor coordination are, are strengthened and, 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 and get uh, larger. Imagine it throughout a lifetime. We all have different skills that we've developed, so our brains adapt and adjust to those different experiences. Those differences tell us a lot about brain function, especially for researchers searching for cures for diseases affecting the brain. The kind of work that we're doing at the boundaries between systems research and clinical research is an essential component of understanding how the brain is organized in development, normal function, and how it changes in disease and what are the mechanisms of the pathophysiology of disease. This might be the most detailed digital mind atlas ever, but everyone, researchers and users, are limited to just this one model. It's one brain. And if you want to study intersubject variability, or you want to study changes in the brain over time during normal development and disease, you have to repeat this kind of process. He says at this point, they could create one new data set a year. And while you might not be able to use these to find routes for your latest trip, this tool might just help build paths to understanding some of the remarkable places inside our minds. For Mountain Lake Journal, I'm Tamika Weatherspoon.